What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Shattered Backboard 3.0. Whether you love this shoe or you hate this shoe, I think this might be one of the most interesting releases of the entire year. So I picked up the Shatter Backboard 3.0 from Flight Club New York for a stupid price of $1,010. Especially stupid because this shoe didn't even come with the box. It came in the Flight Club box and that was literally it. I'd actually tried to buy another pair of Shatter Backboard 3.0s in a different size from Flight Club last week for in-store pickup and I paid for it and everything and then I went into the store and they said that they had already sold it. So uh... That kind of sucked, so the review is a little bit later than I would have liked, but hey, it's still a month early. And funny story, but yesterday when I first got the package in, I decided to record an impromptu unboxing to sort of capture my emotions and my reactions to seeing this shoe for the first time and seeing what I spent so much money on, so uh, why don't we check that video out. So this package that I've been waiting for for about four days from Flight Club finally came in, and because this shoe is such a... I guess controversial shoe, like people either love it or they hate it. I've definitely heard more people hating it than loving it. I kind of wanted to open it on camera and get my first actual um, look at the shoe in the studio and give you my honest first impressions on this shoe in the studio, which is where I see and review most of my shoes. Um, I have seen this shoe in Flight Club, so this isn't the first time that I've seen it, but this is the first time that I've seen it in an environment where I feel comfortable, to be honest. There's the front of the box. Not that it matters because this isn't the retail packaging, but I'm a little nervous. Let's just dive into it. Huh. It doesn't smell like most Jordans. <laughs> uh, okay. So I guess this is it. This is the uh, Shatter Backboard 3.0 Vaseline Edition. I mean, it's it's better than I expected. It genuinely is better than I expected, but it's not great. And I do have to say, after having the shoe for a day and wearing it around, um, I do kind of like it. And I hate that I'm saying that, but it's true. When mock-ups first surfaced online at the end of like last year or the beginning of this year of the Shattered Backboard 3.0s, we never really even thought that the upper would be made of anything other than leather. We just knew that the color blocking would look like this. The thought never really crossed our mind that the upper would be made of anything other than just standard leather. We did know the color blocking would be like this, but we didn't know the shoe would end up looking like this. And then I remember a couple months back when images first leaked of this shoe and people finally realized that this shoe looked like it was covered in Vaseline. And uh... Sorry to say that it still does, even in hand. The upper of the Shattered Backboard 3.0 is so weird and different and just not something that I've ever seen before on an Air Jordan or any other sneaker for that matter. It really is just something that you kind of have to get used to. If somehow this review does change your mind on this sneaker or you have always wanted this sneaker from the get-go, this shoe is slated to release on October 26th for 160 bucks. It's obviously fitting because it's around Halloween and it's sort of a Halloween themed sneaker or Halloween colored sneaker. To be honest, the thing that I'm most interested in about this sneaker isn't the actual shoe itself, it's the reception of this shoe and how people will really receive it when it comes out. Will they change their mind? Will they still hate it? Will prices drop? Will prices skyrocket? I have no idea. I really can't figure it out with this shoe. But rather than waste time with speculation, why don't we jump into the sneaker itself and find out what makes this shoe so unique. Starting off with the most dominant feature on this shoe, you've got this crinkled patent leather type material. I don't know if it's exactly patent leather. I don't even know if there's leather underneath the material. It looks like there is, but I'm not totally sure. The best way I can describe it is a super gloss crinkled patent leather, and I think that's pretty much what it is, but I could be wrong. Around the toe of the sneaker, you've got the mud guard in black, and then in the center of the toe on the vamp, you've got this bright orange material that feels much more crinkly and cracked than the rest of the upper. I noticed that on the other pair that I tried on at Flight Club, and I'm not sure exactly why the toe is so much more wrinkly than the rest of the shoe, and I guess it's just something that they're doing with the toe, that's the kind of material that they decided to use, and to be fair, if it creases, you won't notice at all, if that's a plus, I guess. The texture of the toe really does feel like it's cracking, and I don't like that at all. It feels 
really brittle. I've heard people call these the Vaseline ones. I've heard people call these the chicken grease ones. I've heard people say that you need to wipe your hands after you hold these shoes. I've heard everything. And uh, I get it, I think. <laughs> I think they're all kind of funny. One thing I do have to say about the overall aesthetic of this sort of crinkled patent leather look is that the way the sneaker looks is very dependent on the light that it's in. If you're in a studio like this with a lot of lights, it's gonna look super crinkly, super glossy, more so than it will anywhere else. If you're outside, unless you're in direct sunlight, it's not gonna look as crazy shiny as this. It's just gonna look a little bit more muted and it might even look just like standard leather. I actually took a picture of this shoe to send my friend this morning and the way the picture came out really made this shoe just look like standard crinkled leather and I really love the way it looked. You can however get kind of close to that look in certain lighting situations. It's just a really interesting shoe because the entire look of the sneaker changes depending on where you're standing. Obviously I love the two colors that they used on the shoe and I love the contrast that these colors create. I think the orange is really nice and bright and saturated and I think the black is really nice and deep and it doesn't really have any shades of blues or grays in it. It's just a solid black. As you move up on the shoe you've got these flat black laces that weave through more of that crinkled patent leather around the eyelets. Underneath the laces you've got some Surprisingly, a standard Air Jordan 1 nylon tongue. There's nothing really different about this tongue than any regular Air Jordan 1, except it's on a shoe that's made of crinkle patent leather. The tongue comes in black with a black tag at the top with Nike Air embroidered into it in orange. Inside the sneaker, the sock liner is actually a different material than most of the other recent Air Jordan 1 releases. Instead of that standard sort of mesh material, you actually have a much more neoprene feeling material. It's almost exactly like what you have on the Obsidian 1s. The insole of the sneaker comes in a plain black with the Nike Air branding printed onto the heel in orange, and unfortunately, it doesn't have that dope shattered backboard graphic that you had on the original 1.0s. That honestly was like one of my favorite parts of this shoe. I know you couldn't really see it, but it was just such a nice detail. When it comes to fit, although this Shattered Backboard 3.0 might look different than other Air Jordan 1s, fits exactly the same. And for me, that's true to size, but for you, it might be something different. I definitely suggest if you've never tried on a pair of Air Jordan 1 highs before and you're planning to buy this sneaker on release day or online, definitely go down to your local sneaker store and try on any pair of Air Jordan 1s just to make sure you're grabbing the right size for you. Moving back on the sneaker, you get some more of that crinkled patent leather material. Oh, that's why they did it. Maybe this crinkled patent leather kind of looks like a backboard shattering. If that's the case, that's smart. That's, that's tricky. I, that's, I'm impressed. I wonder if that's actually why they did that. If they did that, it would make a lot more sense. I'm gonna go with that because I actually like that story a lot better than just them deciding to throw on crinkled patent leather. I think it makes the shoe more meaningful. So I'm gonna stick with that. A majority of the midfoot is covered in that same crinkled black patent leather, and right in the center of the midfoot, you've got the bright orange Nike swoosh. I love this color blocking so much, I just wish they had made this shoe just standard leather. It would have looked so much better. And you know what? I bet you they're gonna drop a standard leather version next year. I haven't heard any rumors about it, but it wouldn't surprise me because then they could sort of double their profits, get everyone to buy this pair, and then get everyone to buy that pair because it's better. I don't know if that's what's gonna happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Moving even farther back in the shoe, you've got more orange panels around the heel, and then at the top of the lateral side, you've got the Air Jordan Wings logo in black. The heel of the shoe doesn't actually look that bad. I think it just kind of looks like a standard patent leather Air Jordan 1 on the heel because it's not as crinkly. And I think if this had just dropped as just a standard patent leather Air Jordan 1, people would have been a lot more on board with this. But you never know, people might just be talking some big game right now, and when these actually drop in October, they might be all about them. I saw that with the Off-White Air Jordan 1s, we saw that with the Yeezy Wave Runners. You never know, this could be one of the hottest shoes of the year. Who knows? Just out of curiosity, I'm checking the production date of this shoe, and it says June 5th, 2019 through July 15th, 2019. Hmm. So it's been around for a while, apparently. Then moving down on the shoe, you get to another point of contention, this cream or sail colored midsole. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't like this midsole and outsole because it's all one color. I personally don't mind it. Obviously, I would have preferred if the outsole had been black or orange or something to match with the upper, but to be honest, it really doesn't make or break the shoe for me. Then we finally get to the bottom of the shoe with more of that cream color or sail colored outsole rubber. Overall, I've gotta say that I kinda like the Shatter Backboard 3.0s. No, it's not my favorite sneaker of the year. No, it's not even in the top 10, but it's not a bad shoe. I think they experimented with it. I think if the story is actually that this is supposed to represent a shattering backboard, that makes this shoe a lot cooler. But the weird amount of hate that this shoe is getting will start to dissipate the closer we get to release date. And I think people will really be excited about this shoe when it releases. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Shatter Backboard 3.0s and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself, whether this review changed your mind at all, or whether you're just gonna let these guys go. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.